Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today we have a very nice Italian designer lamp on the bench, which we're going to rewire with improvements. Now I say this is an Italian designer lamp, but uh, I have no real evidence for that other than this big chrome globe. But the customer has brought it to me. She wants it rewired with a few modifications. So the first thing we're going to do is just break it all down and take it apart. Now the socket has helpful instructions because it says press right there. And if you've got enough strength in your thumb, you can get it loose. Take it out. And the first thing I see is, of course, there's no underwriter's loop. Just a straight wire into the socket which makes this the work of an amateur, for sure. We'll go into more about that a little bit later when I'm putting it back together. Now we loosen this screw, and that piece is loose enough to come right off. Now ordinarily, for this kind of a lamp rewire, I wouldn't need to take all this stuff apart unless it really needed to be cleaned. But in this case, the customers requested that these check rings be replaced with new shiny ones, which is one of our improvements. And this all goes back together pretty much the way it came apart. And this big rubber washer here goes on the inside so that this won't rattle. Also, this pipe here is a nice touch. This is the way I would do it if it wasn't already hadn't been already done, which is that pipe prevents this whole piece from getting crushed when you have to tighten it down because uh, this is fairly lightweight steel, and even though it is pretty strong, there's enough force that you could squash it down when you try to tighten it. it squashes down, it gets loose, you tighten it down some more. Eventually you'll run it out to the end of the threads where there's no more tightening it and you've got a loose Radley lamp. And that won't happen in this case. I'm putting it back together with a nickel plated nut and a little bit of blue thread lock. Now with this tall column of pipes and pieces like that and these black lucite wings, it's not practically possible to get it so tight that nothing can move. But what you want to do is get it so tight that it doesn't rattle. This is really like a string of beads. And there's just a limit to how tight you can get it. But you can get it so that the uh, socket won't rotate once it's installed. And that's what's important. Now another improvement our customer wants is a cord 167 inches long.
Another thing that marks this as a high-end lamp upmarket is the little hole where the uh, wire goes through has actually been rounded over and smoothed so that I don't have to worry about it cutting or and don't have to worry about installing a plastic grommet which is this is just ordinary punched out sheet metal I might have to enlarge that hole and um, put in the plastic support. The saddle is going to be abandoned because the customer wants to use a uh, ornamental globe type bulb on here. And we're going to be using this nickel plated socket. I like these because they don't snap together. This ring captures the top of it, holds it in place. And with the screw in the thread here, I can set it to wherever I need it to be without having to worry about it not being completely tight. Now I'm not going to use the uh, switch that came with the socket shell. What I have here is an electronic dimmer socket interior, which will go right up in here and uh, we'll install in place of the old one. Now there's two very important steps before we can assemble the socket. The first is tinning the wires. Now, if I were using a regular cord set, which came with the plug molded onto it, it would also come with the other end with little drops of solder on these stranded wires. And what that does is that when I put it under the screw terminal, it keeps the wires from splaying out and getting uh, loose underneath the screw. And since I don't have a pre-made cord set for a 167 inch lamp cord, I'm going to have to tin these myself. And that's just simply taking the soldering gun and putting a drop on the end of each wire. The next thing is to tie this knot, which is known as the underwriter's knot. A little pretzel looking thing like that. And its purpose is that if someone trips over the lamp cord in the dark or in the light, doesn't really matter, they won't yank the wires from underneath the screw terminals. If that happened, you'd have two hot wires inside the steel pipe inside the lamp. Somebody goes to pick that up and that's just simply not a good thing to happen. Now, You'll notice here on the socket, we've got a brass colored screw, silver colored screw. On the cord itself, one side has smooth insulation and the other side has ridges that you can feel with your fingers. That's a color coding so that you'll know that the smooth side always goes under the brass wire. This goes back a long way, back to the 70s when they needed some way to safely ensure that people wouldn't get shocked if they reached up into a lamp in the dark and there were no uh, bulb in the socket. If they touched the shell, they might get shocked. Well, by wiring it this way, and the wiring that goes all the way back to the breaker box, you won't get shocked just by touching the shell. You'd actually have to stick your finger all the way down inside the light socket to touch the hot wire. Now we work our knot up the cord so that it's nice and snug against the base and pull from underneath to get it down and our shell it's down like that get it tucked up inside there and this type of shell has a little notch punched in the threads which goes into that piece cut in the uh, base and then we just very delicately get these fine threads started and 
we're almost done. Since I'm not using a cord set, which has the molded plug on it, I'm going to have to use a plug that attaches to the cord. The most familiar one is like this here. You simply push your cord up through here, and you've got this piece where the two prongs have little spikes on the inside here that uh, close down over the legs, and then you put it together like that. Now, this is where it becomes important about the smooth insulation and the ridged insulation. Because what you have to do is watch carefully and see which side that spike is on. Because one prong is wider than the other. And that's what ensures that you always stick it in the electrical outlet in the right orientation. So that the ridged wire and the smooth wire go to the same screw back up at the uh, light socket. Now, for this job, we're going to be using this kind of plug, which uh, is just a little smooth, smoother, flatter against the wall, and is good for going behind furniture and stuff like that. And again, I have to look and see, okay, here's my wide one, it's here, and that means I get the ridge plug with the cord turned that way, so that the spike from this wide plug goes into the ridged wire. And this piece is tapered, so it slides on from this direction. If I get it back turned around right. You know, one way or the other, it's got to go. There we go. And that's all there is to that. Now, I said this was an Italian designer lamp, and I have no reason to say that other than the fact that it looks like an Italian design. Lamps are very seldom marked. In fact, the only time they are marked is if they're made by a either an artist, which we would call it a studio lamp. That's usually common more with ceramics than with uh, your metal uh, lamps constructed like this. And um, they're really only marked if people are buying the name and not the lamp. Because no matter how clever or how pretty your design may be, there's nothing in the world that's stopping somebody who has a lamp factory down the street from making an almost identical, a duplicate of it, putting it in their catalog. And most people who are buying lamps strictly for the way they look, that's good enough. Most of the time, having a name brand lamp really isn't that big a deal to people. The result of that is that today, this is probably from the 60s, possibly from the late 50s, is uh, today people find a lamp like this and the first thing they ask is, who made it? How old is it? There's really no way to tell. If it ever did have a label on it, it probably would have been a paper, a gummed or adhesive label. And those always disappear as soon as you get them home because that's like Minnie Pearl walking around with her price tag hanging off her hat. For those of you who know who Minnie Pearl is. In any case, this is Bronze Age for the Secret Underground Laboratory. I thank you for sticking through this video with me. I appreciate it very much if you would like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're screaming in on uh, 500 subscribers at this point and we really want to get that uh, YouTube TITAC. It's got the little bitty YouTube emblem on it. So, again, thank you very much. Hope to see you in the next video.